So hi everyone uh, online and here. We have a um, quarter four and full year to talk about, and I'm sure we'll be talking also about 2017 to some extent. Um, as I look then uh, for, um, should I use this clicker? Okay. As I look back at 2016, if I should use just a few words to, to label it, I think we did what we expected to do, uh, slightly above actually to, to the market on EBITDA where we started the year. Uh, and I feel that we have a great potential now in the Nordic Baltic core uh, and that's what for us to show and prove 2017. By looking at the numbers, uh, we said that we would deliver an EBITDA in line or slightly above and that's a revised EBITDA as you remember uh, and we did. We came in on two and a half roughly uh, above last year. We had a capex estimate of 14 to 15 initially in the year. We then guided you up towards the upper range of that and we came in on pretty much 15. Uh, and then we said that we have a dividend policy of 80%, at least 80% of the cash flow or two krona, at least two krona. And we are proposing two krona to the AGM. So those are the real uh, highlights for the quarter and the year. So if I then move to um, uh, some more numbers, um, the um, quarter four numbers, one thing I'd like to point out here is that it's actually organic growth on group level. Uh, it's small, but it's what we strive for. We strive to find growth and we strive to balance the declining fixed with the new services uh, that we have across our Nordic Baltic continued operation this is, of course. Uh, so I'm glad to see that we're actually able to produce some growth. On the reported side in Q4, obviously, Yoigo is out, and therefore the reported numbers are affected. Uh, on the full year side, we are then, as I said, uh, two and a half up on EBITDA. For the quarter, it's down, and that's very much in the line with how we have guided you, and that's the comparables for 15 that was uh, difficult, and the, the shape of the curve for the year that we have guided you to was coming through and slightly above. So let's dig in a little bit more uh, on the highlights for, um, if, if I take a few wordings on, on the year as such as well. We are fo refocusing the company, as you know, to the Nordic Baltic footprint. Um, and that is uh, both organically and non-organically. Uh, we have solid uh, slash strong performance in our core markets here. Uh, and uh, specifically Norway, I would say, uh, on the back of the Tele2 acquisition, uh, really producing the results that we expect and above. Uh, and getting ready for more, as you know. We have Fonero in the pipeline, hopefully to be approved shortly. Uh, and then our investment uh, strategy of high, admittedly, CapEx, is paying off. Uh, and we have been awarded through the year the best networks in five of our core markets, including Sweden, Finland and Norway. So that's uh, very, very good news. On Q4 then again, service revenue growth, it is what we strive for and we did that in Q4. Uh, we have announced a new operating structure where we have brought a bit more of the P&Ls, Sweden, Finland and Norway now in, in the group executive management team. So more focused on the direct P&Ls in the new core. Uh, I want to mention a few words on Telia Carrier, which we seldom do. But during the year, they have improved EBITDA with about 25%, around 100 million in absolute EBITDA improvement. Uh, and the refocusing from low margin voice to higher margin data services paying off uh, and a well, well done job to the carrier team. And then we are seeing turned trends in Eurasia. And I'll point you to some of those trends later on. But that's important both for our existing business, of course, to make sure that we do the best as long as we are there, but also to the interested parties that we're talking to, to show that we are, we believe we now have hit the bottom in our markets in Eurasia. Um, and then again, uh, a fantastic fiber quarter in Sweden, a uh, high pace to meet the pent up demand that still are out, is out there on the fiber plays in Sweden. And we are now at about 1.5 million households and 186,000 uh, through the year. So pretty much in line with what we've been talking about uh, in our discussions since capital markets days, etc. Let's then move in to a couple of points on some really positive things that we see across our footprints. Our TV business is very strong, uh, both on customer intake and on ARP uplift, which is uh, then generating, of course, good um, 
uh, revenue growth uh, in, in key markets driven by Sweden as the largest, but the other markets also delivering on the TV proposition. As you know, we believe strongly in fixed, mobile and TV in our converged offerings. So this is good news. And on top of this, we also have our OTT TV product growing double digit or triple digits in, in subscriber base. Uh, in Sweden it's called Telia Play Plus and it's a fantastic service. Please try it. Uh, if you move on to the build revenues mobile across our footprint, we also see this is blended build mobile uh, and growing. In Sweden, in Norway, in Finland, in our three largest markets, we have mobile build revenue growth. Very important because we still are under pressure in some parts of the B2B segments, but very well mitigated by consumer. And also in Finland, we're actually in the positive territory uh, across segments. So this is uh, a highlight I'd like to, to, to make, that our mobile business is strong and growing. Then um, on the group level, uh, we have a service revenue growth, as I mentioned, for the quarter. It's a mix of Europe, which is higher, driven by Norway, and then Sweden also into black positive territory on service revenue growth. On EBITDA, very much as, as expected, as, as I said, uh, where Sweden came in uh, just below uh, zero uh, and fought well in the end against hard comparables. And Europe, strong EBITDA uptake, Norway, key driver uh, in, in that uh, uplift. Then uh, let's focus on Sweden a bit, a couple of slides on Sweden. Uh, on the left, the B2C and B2B split uh, on the service re revenue in total. Uh, we have a growth um, on uh, B2C, also excluding OTCs. Uh, and B2B is recovering, uh, and I'll get to that in a minute. On the service revenue side, organic growth, you see uh, on, the, on the right, uh, you have uh, SME Soho in growth territory still. Uh, we've been talking about this uh, throughout the quarter. We have a proposition that is working well in Sweden. Uh, a personal technician, very much the, the face of the proposition out in the market. Uh, on the B2B, large corporate uh, public, uh, we are still in negative, negative territory, even if it's a better uh, number there. Uh, I wouldn't call it a big trend shift, uh, but it's definitely signs of recovery. Uh, there are some one-offs uh, in here that make it look a little bit too good, uh, so don't get your hopes up too high yet on the B2B Sweden side. Um, on uh, uh, revenue trends and ARPU, we have, uh, except for fixed then, growing ARPUs and growing revenues across uh, Sweden. Uh, I think this is an important picture. We uh, will get back to this when Christian talks about core services, legacy services, and the pressure we have on our, our uh, profitability. But the new and core services are, are growing. And the ARPA trends are still in positive territory here uh, for uh, our, our converged pillars, mobile, fixed, and TV. So a solid platform uh, with growth is the short of it in Sweden. And then on um, fiber, uh, a couple of words on the fiber play. To the left, you have the absolute re mo monthly recurring service charges uh, on fiber. After you get the OTC, you will get the monthly fees, uh, of course, going forward. And that's growing between 20 and 30 percent per quarter. Uh, and that's a strong growth on the fiber aftermarket if you want. So don't just look at the OTCs which can distort the picture. We have underlying strong growth on fiber revenues. Uh, a couple of data points then on uh, the fiber play. 44% growth in the villas, 1.2 billion in OTC revenues, 186,000 new uh, installations for the year, uh, which comes with capex around 3.2 for the year on the fiber side and we believe we have growing market shares in the fiber universe so all in all a consistent story which what we had throughout the year and we tried to get, tell you that last quarter when we had a bit of a dip we said it's not a change of ambitions and not a change of market dynamics we're sticking to our plan and we are so uh, that's the summary of sweden so let's move on to finland uh, new CEO since January 1st, Dan-Erik Velland, uh, vast experience from running various businesses across Europe and Asia. 
uh, taking over from uh, Valder uh, and have a solid platform to grow from. Uh, a job well done in transforming Finland uh, and now in positive growth on mobile reven revenues. Uh, now let's uh, take it to the next level and also get the EBITDA moving because it's not. Uh, as you see here, we have a decline uh, on the organic EBITDA in spite of some uplift on revenues. And this specific quarter, uh, you have some one-offs. So it's, it's not as bad as the scene, but it still should come through better numbers in Finland over time. And then Norway, uh, the star of the year has been, and in the quarter, of course, uh, we see a strong uplift in EBITDA numbers, uh, and uh, we have growth. Um, this is two things, and you find it to the right on the slide. We have an uplift on ARPU, important. Even if there is a decline in customer base, we are growing our ARPU, and we are, yes, we're losing some customers uh, to uh, competition. Uh, some of that loss in customers, low ARPU customers, we are getting back on wholesale agreements. And that's also an important part of the growth story in Norway. Um, so um, strong focus on existing base, monetizing, uh, and getting in right into the, to the right uh, buckets and sizes for our customers. Um, then Denmark. A tough market. We have talked about Denmark many times, and we see that in the picture here. We're struggling to get any movement on revenue growth or EBITDA growth, uh, in spite of great efforts on ground from Morten and the team. Uh, and we are reviewing our options, as I've said before. There are a lot of options that we can do. Uh, we have been clear today also that uh, when it comes to TDC, we think there's a lot of speculations. So our response to that has been that that's uh, a too risky play with a too high valuation. We're looking at other options in Denmark. Uh, and we're not excluding uh, the rest of the options on the table. So let's talk about them more when we know what to do. In the meantime, we are focusing on the organic improvements in Denmark. And the Baltics, a couple of words, uh, a little bit mixed picture, I have to say, uh, and also a bit of one-offs in Estonia. had a bad comparable against a, a one-off deal in Q4 last year, otherwise that would have been a pretty positive picture on, on, on revenues. On EBITDA, fine, uh, and we are expecting more from our merged entities in Estonia and Lithuania. Uh, we expect to get more out of that uh, in our converged plays going forward. Uh, when it comes to Latvia, uh, we are working hard to find a solution uh, with the Latvian uh, markets where we have two different companies run differently and get no benefits from the, uh, the trend that we see in many of our other markets in the convergence. Uh, then a couple of words uh, for once about our Eurasian operations uh, and I'm just going to point you to the trend shift that we are seeing or the trend is in, uh, continuing I should also say. Um, as a portfolio as a whole, we are uh, actually in growth territory here on service revenue, um, slightly uh, still below on EBITDA growth, but it's coming up. Uh, main contributor to the improved numbers, of course, is uh, Kazakhstan, which has been an extremely rough uh, market uh, and macro uh, competition. Uh, and legacy from, from KSL, but now improving and getting ready for 2017 where we should expect better deliveries. So um, if I should summarize before I let Christian come up and talk more about the numbers, again, a full year, full year EBITDA in line or above even for if you take our outcome from, from a year ago. Uh, and we have solid performance or good performance in many of our core new markets or core home markets, as should I say. Um, Eurasia on a better track, uh, which gives us comfort on, on the dividend to Krona for the year, obviously, and then also comfort into 2017, which we'll come back to shortly.